Time for the market report. Prices looking a little bit on the sweet side. And quite unexpected at that. We're talking about the sugar markets, of course, <laughs> taking a bump up this past week. <laughs> but first, the numbers. Slightly down, but not too dramatically. And then, as we've hinted, a deep look into the sugar markets and what makes them tick. And finally, in our row report, what's causing grains to keep falling? We'll look into it. So, markets trending down ever so slightly, row crops on the move while livestock a mixed bag. Let's take a look. Last, last week's biggest loss, lumber down about $18. It's followed by wheat at 13 and a quarter cents. We'll get into why in a bit. Last week's biggest gain, sugar up one and a quarter cents. Does it seem like much? Well, that's over a 6% increase from the previous week. So, what moves the sugar markets? Where does it come from and what factors affect its price? I decided to take a deeper look. Here's the backstory. Sugar comes from two primary sources, sugar cane and sugar beets. The beets are grown in the northern U.S. because they fare better in cool, wet weather. The more familiar sugar cane is grown in tropical and subtropical environments. It's one of Hawaii's largest ag exports, along with pineapples. The reason these two crops are used is because they both contain large amounts of sucrose. Most fruits and vegetables have sucrose, but only up to about 10%. Sugar beets and sugar cane have 16% and 14% respectively. The largest factors concerning sugar price are global stocks, U.S. dollar price, weather conditions, government regulations, and oil prices. Why oil prices? Because sugar is considered an energy source. Ethanol is made via sugar cane. An energy source's value is determined by its caloric value and current energy price. The price for that is determined by oil. According to Food Business News, the current rise of sugar prices specifically has to do with high demand despite inflation, and Mexico's sugarcane crop yields not as high as expected, but not by much. In other words, supplies lower than demand, therefore, prices up. For the rest of our row crops, wheat dropping in price, as we've said, while corn and soy tag along. Why is this happening? Well, according to Elaine Cub, it has to do with a combination of supply on the global market and general market forces. And it starts with a question, can wheat go lower? Well, I couldn't say that it's never going to go lower, but it's certainly a reminder of what a global market it is because, I mean, that's obviously a, a bearish trade based on better conditions in Russia or guesses about their um, willingness to keep things shipping on the Black Sea without disruption. But it's definitely not a reaction to numbers here domestically in the United States. Kansas was actually putting out some crop condition ratings finally uh, for, for the spring going forward, and it's like 19% good to excellent ratings of their mm -hmm. winter wheat as it's coming out of dormancy and 51 percent either poor or very poor so all of the drought in the southwestern plains of the united states is very much still affecting the united states wheat prospects but that's not what the market is trading the market is trading things from all over the globe so i, I believe there is more volatility to come in wheat one way or another and it could be lower i mean i i, I cannot promise you that that was a low I, I don't think the party's over. I don't think that if, if someone is, is very risk averse that they should necessarily listen to Elaine Cub saying this and like, you know, put all the, bet the farm on this. But I think um, there's legitimate scarcity for feed grains, for corn specifically, maybe less so for the oil seeds. But if you've got old crop corn sitting in a bin that you feel confident that you can keep in condition going into the spring and summer, all of the basis markets, anywhere there's a livestock industry and anywhere towards the Southwest, shows that there is legitimate scarcity. End users really need to pay up for this grain because there's just not enough of it in the old crop market. However, when you start looking towards the end of 2023, once you get past this next harvest, eventually these commodity markets are always eventually going to fall apart and get back down towards the cost of production. But for now, if you've got, like I said, grain sitting in a bin, I don't think the party is necessarily over. Brazil, that's another good reason to think that some of these markets will eventually start to fall down and why I'm not quite so bullish for the oil seeds is because Brazil does have this record large soybean crop that is being exported right now. So it is relieving some of that scarcity in the global soybean market. Um, but the global feed grains market still has a lot of scarcity. When you talk about that triple dip La Nina that has been affecting South America, Argentina more so than Brazil, that has been cutting the overall South American production more than the Brazilian record high um, yields and, and acreage has been contributing to it. We really have not had much volatility in 
any of these corn or soybean markets until this sell-off that we've seen just over the past week. The sell-off kind of happened for no apparent reason, just funds, I guess, taking some risk off the table as they're moving around into other assets. So yeah, that probably is an opportunity to take, you know, sort of a mystery in a still scarce markets and, and lock something in. Gosh, the cliche is that a big crop gets bigger and a short crop gets shorter. And there is potential for the Brazilian soybean mark, or soybean crop to be bigger than 153 million metric tons, which is the last number that USDA came out with. There is a WASD coming out next Wednesday that could um, probably come up with a number somewhere near that. But as I mentioned just before, it's the cuts to Argentina that are going to have a bigger impact on that global supply and demand table than sort of your shading one way or the other for, for Brazil. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. Forces on the move sure is an interesting season.